Hello, this is the deep learning section of the Big Data Applications Analytics course. This is Jeffrey Fox, and this is the section on image processing. Or more precisely, image processing and scene understanding, but that just means fancy image processing. All right, let's go. Well, this comes from a handbook on this, um, actually deep learning for this problem. And it classifies the various parts of scene understanding, um, classifying it, answering questions about it, generating captions, estimating its height, recognizing objects, looking at the text in the image, recognizing faces. These are all parts of uh, uh, scene understanding. And um, you have to put everything together to understand the full scene. There is an illustration on the next slide of ice hockey. And um, as far as I know, everything is replaced by deep learning. And that has just basically happened over the last, starting 10 years ago, possibly perhaps, and is now complete. Um, and it's also getting much more complicated um, as we've advanced, we've done more and more with deep learning, and we've got the deep learning components more complicated. Here is a classic example of uh, taking a picture here of ice hockey and dividing it into segments. This is the, this is the first step in image processing, is to find these little squares. Here, we have lots of them, we have another three here, and another one here. This is not a very high uh, fidelity picture, is it? And then we have to piece them together if we want to understand the scene, because uh, each of these individual people may not be recognized as eye hockey, although most of them have hockey sticks, so it's probably possible. But together, it's obviously a game of ice hockey. All right, so here is the sort of process in um, how we do this, we um, pre-process everything to clean up the noise. We try to find the key points within the image and, ex and uh, extract some features to discover the parts of the image. You have to identify the component features. And there is this uh, very important um, driving competition, which has now been won, <coughs> so it's no longer driving. And uh, there was a famous collection of pictures called ImageNet, which were labeled. It was the, and a huge effort was placed into this very dull job of labeling these images. And that was essential to advance this field, this uh, work. <coughs> and here we have these steps that we mentioned before. Get the image, pre-process, identify the key points, uh, classify the features. Here's a lousy quality plot of the performance on ImageNet. Back in 2010 or something, we were, um, you are people at UIUC got uh, whatever it was, 27% efficiency. Then we had the breakthrough with AlexNet, 15, 16%. And then these are all deep learning. And now we're back at, um, 3% or something, and humans do 5%. So we've, we've, um, computers have won. There was a little bit of Shamal I assume that was Baidu, which uh, somehow got people annoyed with it and by what it did, but it actually did technically very well. Um, but they, they didn't obey the rules of the competition, so it was that there wasn't a classification then. It's now moved to Kegel. This competition is no longer. Uh, actively competed. All right, so we have these various parts of image analysis, segmenting it. Uh, and these have, these are, um, can be given different names. Um, and they're all thought basically correspond to pre-processing, breaking it up into parts, and then fitting models to each part. Um, and here are some examples of, um, from different sources of uh, this, this process. Um, we have to segment it. That's this important first step. That's probably um, 
That's, that was originally not done by deep learning, but now is. Because the originally deep learning was most effective at taking a clean image of a of a polar bear and saying it's a polar bear or a or a panda or something. Um, so we need to divide it into parts, identify the important construct structures, reconstruct what the image is from those parts, and then uh, match different images together. Here is a little slide on segmentation. This is a particularly clean segmentation. And, and this actually comes from this nice lecture here by from Stanford. And effectively, what this emphasizes is we're clustering. We're taking this uh, tiger and noticing all these pixels here are pretty similar. And so we've identified this uh, tiger over here. And then we have the green background, the blue background, the river, another bit of green background, and then some uh, path here, which is things. So we have one, these various paths, which are clear to the human eye, although you wouldn't necessarily um, identify this, say, one here quite so cleanly. Uh, the tiger is obviously clean. And here is um, an interesting philosophical statement. Um, so we want to we want to classify together things that people see as a unified whole, and that's um, sort of what we're doing. People look at that tiger and see there's a tiger, and all those parts of the tiger together make a tiger. So that's a uniform whole. And then there's some amusing comment about the whole is not actually greater than the sum of the parts; it's just different from the sum of the parts. Because it's a recognition that there's a tiger, not four legs, a tail, and a head. Okay, here we are. Um, we have this uh, object here, which is um, a face, for obviously. And then we show you how to break it up into the component parts. The eyes, the mouth, the lips, the nose. And here we continue to recognize bicycles. In different uh, syntax, we don't actually seem to recognize the last bicycle here. And I'm not certain we have the box quite in the right place here. So these are not perfect, but they are. And then we represent the total probability as always the product of the component probabilities. And we're always maximizing these products. That's called the likelihood. And um, maximum likelihood takes, um, looks at the overall probability as something is a given thing, multiplies all those probabilities together, and then tr chooses the things and the parameters of things to uh, to make this uh, the, to make the picture the most probable picture given the hypothesis. So <clears throat> here we have um, a more precise definition of some of these terms come from this uh, website here. Um, and we've um, taken these different parts of um, what we have to do, the classifying the objects, uh, localizing the objects in the image, um, bounding boxes, segmentation. So starting in 2014, five years ago, everything is done by deep learning. But previously, we had a whole set of custom algorithms which are brilliantly done, quite successful, but not as successful as as um, deep learning is seen by who wins these competitions. Uh, so let's sort of have a little bit of discussion at the beginning of this, which is regions with CNN features. Uh, here, um, a region-based convolutional neural net. And um, now, actually, the regions are found by deep learning. Previously, they were found by classical image processing. Um, Techniques, and we have to remember that we need to rotate and scale images and get the same thing. Uh, the first, um, there was a paper in 2017 with over 3,000 citation. Here's a recent tutorial. All right, here is yet a, another picture of these little uh, squares with identified objects in them. We have cars and um, 
sort of interesting that we found quite a lot of the cars. We probably seem to find all the cars. They all have probabilities, which in this case are very high to be cars. Uh, of course, like we have an example where we have to distinguish cars and racing cars. So um, here, one, here we do have some distinction. It's distinguished a bus from a car. But um, this one is not looking at any of these vegetation, which also could be. You could decide to look for oak trees and maple trees and pines and cedars and things. But that's not what, that's not being done here. All right, so this original uh, RACNN was 2014. As I said, it was a hybrid method. The uh, feature extraction, which was taking things like this, little little ob sub objects and classifying them as a as a, people or horses or cars and what have you. Um, that came after we found the region. So you had maybe many region proposals to, to 2000. You warped the region and then you classified it with a CNN. And notice R here is region, it's not recurrent. We have RNNs which are recurrent neural nets. And these used to use SVMs to do the final classification. Now all of that is much better done with CNNs and softmax and things like that. And they say AlexNet, which was the devastating uh, breakthrough result, which uh, won the 2012 uh, image classification thing. I showed you that on a previous graph. So that's that. And then this got better and better. Um, and um, there was some enhanced um, linkage in the neural nets to try to uh, propose regions, go from the feature maps to the classifier. And um, <coughs> here it actually used the CNN to produce the regions and the type of object to consider in the region. And um, then used the, the fast thing had because it trained faster by linking the various layers together. We know that um, these uh, systems can be can take a long time to um, converge. So there are some specialized versions of all of this, like um, 3D image processing, constructing 3D from many 2Ds. Text recognition is an important special case. Face recognition is uh, very important. My computer uses it. And actually, the immigration services of various countries also now use face recognition. And um, about entry to the USA and I believe to other, I, I, it was used when I went to, to China, I believe. There's stereo issues by adding depth as an unknown. Uh, to the lot to the things you're minimizing and then we have to put it all together to interpret the whole scene Here is something from David Crandall 3d reconstruction if you have enough pictures of a which are all 2d and they're as they're taken from different points and if you have a true 3d object and you know that this the picture is the picture of this object you can actually reconstruct a three, there's enough information to fit for the position where the camera was when it took the picture and to reconstruct a full 3D image. That's one of David Crandall's amazing research areas. Uh, here's text recognition, which is uh, easy to understand. Presumably the police want to do it to uh, know who to arrest. So they want to look at um, license plates. Um, here we have Google uh, Street Maps, which is trying to recognize street numbers to see how the maps are meant to get the right answer. Here we're trying to just look at uh, banners, uh, Cave Spring uh, High School. And um, this is just so important, it has a specialized industry devoted to it. And um, some images are solely taken to be able to, rep to, to, re to actually capture the text. So if we look at um, various applications of imaging, 
as well as the uh, thing we've done ad nauseum, namely uh, self-driving cars, and um, <coughs> which is a really, and also the face recognition surveillance, the national security. Uh, there is a lot of there's a lot of medical work on pathology, which are uh, uh, MRIs and other giant cancer-related uh, scans and. Uh, a pathology image can have 10 billion pixels, a million objects per image, and 100 million features, a dozen to 100 features per object. Per, uh, so that's 100 million features an image. And you often break such an image into sub, sub images, and then have to do something, halos, to capture image, objects that cross, cross, cross those tiles. And you also have hundreds to thousands of pathology images. Actually, you can have many more than that these days for study. Remote sensing is from satellites, aircraft, and things. Pictures of the world. Um, fires in California, melting glaciers in the in the um, in the Arctic and Antarctic. Um, if you look at two D problems, they tend to be sufficiently Small and uh, finite in size, you can just do it with a GPU style parallelism. 3D problems might use uh, more so larger scale parallelism because they can be pretty big. And all of these have various optimization algorithms to enhance the com convolutional neural nets. Though how many of these optimization algorithms will eventually survive <coughs> when neural deep learning is fully integrated is not quite so obvious. So we'll have to see, but these are important. These areas, pathology and remote sensing, and there's a whole set of these spatial problems, maps, where you you really have, naturally have images. There's a quite a strong correspondence between the Earth-based things, where the Earth is often two-dimensional in practice, because people don't jump up and down that much. Um, and images. So images are very important. They're not just images, they're just anything spatial. Because space is 2D or 3D. Images are 2D or 3D. Here's some more examples. Astronomy, ecology, meteorology. I've already mentioned satellite images. All sorts of biology measurements actually just take pictures of organisms. Um, we have all these different uh, wavelength MRIs, X-ray, CT. Uh, we have electron microscopy, Earth science sonar, satellite radar, and we've collected and we're gathering bigger and bigger instruments, and we have to analyze it. And these deep learning methods are revolutionizing the analysis of these images. Okay, so most of the, uh, these remaining slides in this section. Are discussing various uh, features of the neural nets that won this image competition, or in the same spirit of this image competition. And we spent quite a lot on AlexNet, which really put deep learning on the map, at least for imaging. It had previously been put on the map for um, voice uh, recognition. And it was just much bigger than previous uh, neural nets, 60 million parameters. and. Um, 650,000 neurons, the parameters are the links between the neurons. And it trained on about a week. And um, the far, as we'll see later, this is this diagram here showing these various layers. It's tiny compared to some of the later CNNs. And of course, the GPUs we use to train. Today are much bigger. They have, I don't know, 16 or 32 gigabytes of memory, not three, and um, they're just much faster. Here we just have a thousand categories, and of course you often need to train nowadays to bigger numbers of categories. Um, here, are well, we just repeating that. This is just another picture, maybe a little more clearer to understand of how we put together the different components. And that then comes this classification with with um, probabilities. And um, we had some properties which we extracted from uh, the papers. Uh, so it um, 
There are a thousand different categories in ImageNet, and um, the basic input is always 256 by 256, and um, everything in the training and test set is the same size. If the image is not that, you need to somehow add fake pixels to get it up to the right size, or you need to crop, uh, resize and crop it to get it to the right size. Uh, these are uh, these types of things no longer happen. Uh, it's just mechanics to, to try to cope with these difficulties. It's not deep. Um, so we have five layers and three five convolutional layers, where you have filters and three fully connected layers. And um, filters are designed in classic image processing style to extract features, because that's how you know the classic. Um, differential filter, which is just extracts lines and things like that, which is the sort of atomic feature. That is a really simple filter. Of course, we learn that it's, it's a striking difference between classic image processing and CNNs. In classic image processing, you feed in the filter by brilliant thought. In the CNN, you learn the filter. And what your brilliant thought does is decide where to put a possible filter in. Um, <clears throat> and then we have pooling layers, which are, um, which are used to um, downsample the width and the height to keep uh, keep the size under control. So it only did take a week to train, not months or years. We have RELU uh, neurons in there. And um, also, we had various normalization steps, which eventually I think got taken out. At least in, not in AlexNet, but in later versions of the SnapBot. Um, all right, so it's, a, it's really a mixture of the classic ideas um, RELU, nonlinearity networks, pooling layers, filter layers, and fully connected layers. These are all the basic components. Here are some typical answers um, with various classifications. This one is a bit confused because it's supposed to grill and uh, and a um, convertible. Um, this one is clearly a mushroom. It could also be a special type of mushroom. And uh, this one is cherries and docks. And so these are confusion between Dalmatians and grapes is Hardly, actually, these are, they shouldn't, it should have been able to tell a cherry, I think, from a grape. But obviously, it didn't. That's unfortunate. Remember, AlexNet was only 16%, had a 16% inefficiency. Later ones were much better. All right, so in order to increase the uh, Recognition capability in AlexNet, um, you had to um, uh, <coughs> do things like augment the data. And uh, this is here, we, if you have a pretty picture of a cat, you take the mirror image. Then you take the pretty picture and you crop it in various ways. And uh, this, uh, this gives you, um, um, what is it, around eight, Two reflections, two, two images, five subsampled. So every image gave uh, eight images. And the input images were 227 by 227, and they were upsampled to uh, 256 by 256. Uh, so this is called data augmentation. It's a classic technique. Uh, also, uh, another way you can do things is to change the, uh, the various color structure. Because the identification of something as a cat is not dependent on the details of the color structure. So you need to teach the CNN that by classifying Im images and images with distorted color, color channels as in the same fashion. So that gives you about a factor of 100. Um, and that gives you 10 to the 8 million training images for 60 million parameters. Here we have um, a history of um, classification area, era, 
and actually this side is best. 2014, this, this goes like this time. Here we have AlexNet. And um, it just rips down here to so about 6% here in 2014. So there was huge progress with lots and lots of networks built, which uh, made huge progress um, in the uh, in uh, increasing the uh, quality of thing. Here's the top five um, prediction. Okay, here we have find Google Net, which was the 2014 winner. And now we've gone down from uh, 16 to 6% as shown here. A really striking change in just two years. I uh, remember um, AlexNet was uh, the, really dropped it a lot in 2014. And you can just see that the Google Net is very complex and can be studied for an awful long time to really see what's going on. But remember, you had a lot of talented people just flinging their GPUs at all sorts of different choices. And Google has a lot of resources. Um, so here we. Um, here we see the 2017 where we had 152 in ResNet residual networks from from Microsoft. DenseNet is even bigger. Um, SENet from China improves how the layers are connected, and that's actually an important modern focus to get the convergence better. Um, because um, if you have a true single pipeline, then they get, information gets lost as it gets transmitted through back propagation through the pipeline. And then there's NASNet, which is from Google Brain, which tries to lower the um, um, parameter count. And we have the top five error, and the top one, his top one error, and the top five error. And uh, <coughs> and remember, the top one error is actually still quite high. But we also saw from some of the examples, it wasn't quite obvious what the top one really was. I mean, it was uh, some cases where it's just a matter of definition almost. Okay, so here we have the, we've sort of seem to have leveled off down here. Here is, uh, the, again, the accuracy represented in a different fashion in terms of a function of the gig of the operations used and the accuracy. The accuracy um, gets better and better up here. And the amount of work needed gets worse and worse as you go this way. And so here you have up here the um, this is top one, and here's top five. Remember all the early plots were top five, and um, you can see how um, there's a trade-off. If you want to run on mobile devices, you really need a, a modest uh, operational count. And so it's not, you do not have unlimited resources. And uh, this paper here describes all of this in some detail. And now the final slide, just uh, writing a sort of, um, giving you a graphic of uh, what you can do these days, a whole bunch of zebras, really detailed decomposition of a, of a beach scene. And here, an uh, even more impressive decomposition of a market. And that's using NASNet, one of the very latest, as of the time I'm speaking, uh, systems. So this just gave you a history of how CNNs and deep learning took over the whole field. And now they're dominant. And uh, that's the end of this uh, section on image processing and scene recognition. Thank you very much.